Coming up in our news weekend, the pandemic putting a strain on resources within the public health care sector. You got the story. More money placed into agriculture and fisheries. Plus, your favorite holiday festivals go virtual. News is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Welcome to Our News, the weekend edition, and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top of news tonight, the ongoing battle against COVID-19 continues to place a strain on resources within the public health care system, according to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Pro McMillan. She says though the number of active cases continues to decrease when it comes to the increase of cases with, within family islands, there are challenges. Um, we are at a point now where uh, we are having a uh, less cases, less admissions, um, but particular to the family islands, um, certainly New Providence is our hub. And uh, as it relates to uh, persons who become infected with COVID-19, um, we have to monitor those persons for symptoms. Uh, that, is, uh, that places uh, stress or excess, uh, I would say, duties and responsibilities on the healthcare teams on the ground. The Ministry of Health sent teams to both Eleuthera and Exuma this past week after restrictions on those islands were tightened due to an increase in cases. As these persons uh, deteriorate, we then need to ensure that they are managed until we are able to actually bring them out of the particular island. Um, and of course, that is at a cost. Um, we have in place a system where we have uh, a evacuation, uh, but of course uh, it is a requirement of, for that process that you, um, you know, stabilize the person and you have to wait until you are able to bring that person out. Over 50 nurses who recently sat their exams are expected to join the public health care system very soon, according to Health Minister Ronald Waltz, who said their expertise is needed now more than ever. The nursing consul's final examination for registration and enrollment was completed on the 3rd and 4th of November 2020. Candidates successfully passing this exam are welcome to the cadre of nurses in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. 54 registered nurses and two trained clinical nurses sat the nursing examination. There have been complaints of burnout among physicians and nurses within the public health care system amid the pandemic. Well said with the examination complete, the dozens of nurses will hopefully be to work soon. The examination papers are now being marked at the end of the validation process by the cross moderator and the external examiner, successful candidates who are interested will immediately be hired. This will go a long way to decreasing the current nursing deficit. Prior to the pandemic, a study by the Ministry of Health indicated that 500 additional nurses were needed to make the public health care system more robust. So as we wait the decision of nurses who have passed their examinations to enter the Bahamian cadre of nurses, the government will be paving a parallel track to augment the healthcare system by sourcing additional nurses from abroad. In other news, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources has partnered with the Small Business Development Center to support farming and fishing projects throughout the Bahamas. According to Agriculture Minister Michael Pintard, this is the first of many initiatives to come for that sector, adding that some $5 million has been sent, set aside for the project. Berthy McDermott reports. It's a collaboration geared towards leveraging many opportunities for farmers and fishermen, according to Agriculture and Marine Resources Minister Michael Pintard. He says in the first instance, $5 million has been set aside for fishing and agribusiness funding. These funds will be in the form of grants as follows. Micro, 10,000 and under, small grants or small business grants, 10,000, one cent, to 25,000, and medium, 25,000 and one cents to 50,000. Large agriculture projects over $50,000 
will also be eligible for funding in the form of loans and equity financing. The grants, he added, are available for new and existing businesses in the agriculture and marine resources sector, in acknowledging gaps in the supply chain that hinder local producers from achieving 40% sales to food stores, restaurants, and hotels. Paintard says government is now requiring all entities importing fresh and processed food to purchase 40% of these items from Bahamian producers. According to Pintard, this is all in an effort to boost the country's ability to feed itself. We expect that the inflow of capital is going to ramp up production. The market is guaranteed 40% from private groups that they must buy locally. The government, 75%. What persons need is to get to the finish line in terms of producing. They cannot produce if they don't have resources. And so this, this, is, uh, this is a game changer. Officials anticipate applicants will find out if they've been approved or denied in roughly five weeks. It has long been a concern that approval processes for programs like these can take too long. It's an issue Small Business Development Center Executive Director Devinia Grant says shouldn't be a problem this time around. Now this is very different from the past and I acknowledge the comments that you made. And this is because we've been able to refine the process um, between ourselves and the Ministry of Agriculture to narrow down the time for this type of approval. As for how you can apply, you will apply for this through the Access Accelerator. So that's at www.accessaccelerator.org. Um, there's a specific grant portal for this particular program. Um, it's available uh, by the end of this press conference. It will be available to you. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertha Nee McDermott. A 31-year-old Fox Hill man has been reported as missing and now his family is hoping for his safe return. Edwin McKenzie was last seen on October 28th at his Gun Hill Road home in Fox Hill. He stands at six feet tall and is of slim build and dark complexion. If you have any information that can lead to the safe return of McKenzie, you're asked to contact police at 502-9991 or 911. Well, the Royal Bahamas Police Force held a three-day use of justifiable force and harm training this past week. The training was aimed at refreshing officers' knowledge on laws and best practices in the area of justifiable force and harm. Some 750 officers participated in the event. According to Police Commissioner Paul Rowell, the use of force is justified in making an arrest and detaining suspects. Knowing when it is appropriate to use force and which options are best suited for different situations can only be achieved through training. The use of force is inevitable in police work. In many situations, the lives of officers or civilians may be lost by not using force when necessary or using it improperly. Roll stressed the importance of officers being prepared. No officer knows if or when the use of force must be applied until the situation presents itself. Being prepared through training in force policy and procedures and the classroom instructions and practical training in the use of force reduces criminal liability and civil liability on the officer and the department in the use of force cases. The commissioner says training sessions like these are ongoing and have demanded every officer return to the classroom to be informed of these provisions. But with this particular training, we want to resensitize all of our officers. We do training every week but not at this level where we in, in involve the press. You know, I meet with, with officers around the Bahamas now with, with our uh, virtual platform which we have, and every time there's um, the emergency orders are uh, amended, they come out, we have to hold sessions, training sessions, to make sure that officers understand what it is that the intention of those uh, provisions. Still to come, years after his passing, the family of renowned pastor Miles Monroe vows to continue his legacy. Plus, trouble within the VPSU. Stay tuned. Just when you thought the year would end drill, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirits rise with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Feel the Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together.
You're watching Our News. Welcome back. As the country remembered the tragic passing of Dr. Miles Monroe and his wife Ruth this past week, his son Miles Jr. is vowing to continue his parents' legacy. Georgia Bain reports. Admitting that it is never easy to reflect on the passing of his parents, Miles Monroe Jr. says he will continue to do his part in keeping their memory alive. During the pandemic, he says he's been developing a training institute that will focus on kingdom teaching. We are in, in, in the works of developing uh, some training programs and, and curriculum. One of my dad's biggest goals, one of our organization's biggest goals was to create like a training institute. Uh, where we use his, uh, his books and his messages to create you know, programs and curriculum where our folks could learn uh, different aspects of, of personal development, you know, from purpose to leadership to uh, even you know, kingdom teaching. Realizing now firsthand the impact his father's messages had on the community, Monroe says he will also be working on making more of his father's messages available online. Continuing to... Uh, provide uh, his many messages. You know, he we have teachings dating back to the 80s. You know, so we have uh, thousands of hours of teaching that we that we go through. You know, we it, it's a it's, it's a process. This is a very long process, but you know, we enjoy it. I personally enjoy it because you know I still get to hear hear his voice and I still get to learn um, things that he's been teaching for years, and it, it just means so much more now. And it, in the meantime, Monroe and his sister Carissa continue to spearhead the Miles and Ruth Monroe Foundation. So our goal as an organization is just to continue, um, continue what he started, continue what him and my mother left behind, and just provide it on different platforms to new generations, to new individuals who may not have known who he was, but once they hear the message, you know, it, it, it changes their lives. Reporting for our News Weekend Edition, I'm Georgie Bain. Some members of the Bahamas Public Service Union are challenging the validity of the union's election. The group who ran for several positions within that organization under the banner, the Power Team, alleged there were several violations made, all of which they outlined in two letters to the acting labor director, but both, both before and after the election. Well, despite that group's claim of irregularities, acting labor director John Pinder certified the election. Presidential candidate Alexander Burroughs said they are now planning to take the matter to court. We have now taken course of getting an attorney, we've retained an attorney, and with the view of going into a judicial review in the Supreme Court. And this is basically going to speak towards the balloting. Uh, the ballots were compromised during the elections, and also the electoral process itself prevent ultra-virus of the union's constitution and all parliamentary electoral laws. Now, Burrow said he and his team of 10 were at a disadvantage in this election as they say the voters list was withheld until only a few days before the election, making it, making it challenging to speak to voters. The group has also called for the Minister of Labor to step in. If the minister would, would kindly take a look at the, serious, the seriousness of what's been placed before him, and we would, we would be open to have a, a conversation with him because we believe that this election process was corrupted. I, to utilize his good office to bring some sort of remedy to a situation, um, to try to inject more integrity into the process, uh, we, we, we are welcome to that. Still to come, the opposition leader speaks with young entrepreneurs at Tin Frill Pop-Up. We have the details after the break. Just when you thought the year would end drill, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirit tries with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your Rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis visited the Tin Furl Papa Park on Thursday. The community is comprised of about 18 food and drink entrepreneurs. Co-founder Brandon Kemp said despite all the challenges, it, it felt good to have political figures come out and support. We, we really see the Papa Park as the perfect microcosm of the Bahamian economy. You have 
many vendors here that are working together. Tinfurl is dedicated to making sure everyone is compliant. Everybody has the resources and the support they need to grow their businesses. So we believe that with the government's full support that we can accomplish so much, that we can see all of these vendors establish full-time locations, get food trucks, and start to export their own products, as some of them are working towards. Now Davis applauded the efforts of the community as he visited each stall to speak with business owners. He said if elected, his government would continue to support such ventures. I have to congratulate Brandon and his partners for what they have been doing here and the manner in which they have set this in motion. It is a, it's nothing short of amazing, inspiring to see young Bahamians not only empowering themselves, but seeking to empower others in providing this venue for persons to display their talents, their wares, and to the same time make a living with a view of thinking big, starting small, thinking big, and growing big. Your favorite holiday festival is going virtual this year. It's Park Fest 2020. Stay tuned. This is a huge deal. NFL Sunday Ticket is back only with Ram Trio. All day football, all day Sunday. Enjoy all the benefits of Trio with a huge extra. Never miss a game with NFL Sunday Ticket included in your Ram Trio bundle. All you have to do is opt in. TV, phone, and internet starting at just $99. Call 601-8992 to sign up now. Visit www.rav.bs slash promotions for details. A popular holiday festival has now had to move online due to the pandemic. Jollification has, com has combined with the wine and art fundraiser to create Parks Fest 2020, a virtual shopping event put on by the Bahamas National Trust. BNT special consultant Lynn Gape said their vendors are excited to present the new experience. One of the things we really wanted to do was provide an opportunity for our vendors to benefit and be able to get some kind of income. So we're very excited. It's new. We hope it works. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few little kinks, but we're excited because we're sure we'll be able to expand it and make it part of Wine and Art and Jollification 2021. Now, although the over 60 vendors is only a fraction of the vendor numbers experienced in the past, Gabe says she's encouraged by the level of support from their vendors and sponsors. Parks Fest 2020 will be held November 16th to 22nd. Artist Tiffany Barrett says she's excited to showcase her silk fabric paintings as well as her wine tumblers and masks. This year with the wine tumblers, I'm donating um, proceeds, proceeds back from sales to the BNT again. Um, moving from during this pandemic, it has been difficult trying to push my work. And so I was really looking forward to this opportunity to do it. Um, and it has encouraged me, yes, I've had a website before, but it, it's encouraged me to update it and really push more my social marketing. Online payments for the event will be through PayPal, direct deposit or credit card services. There's also a cash on delivery option. The virtual platform is being created by BahamasLocal.com. CEO Jason McDowell said this has pushed many of the vendors who didn't have websites to do something new businesses in the Bahamas to take, change to digital um, so doing the e-commerce part you know um, yeah it's not been easy but we have to do it um, and some of the vendors have never done it before um, because it is costly to to set up your own platform but we are now with the National Trust giving this to all the, the, the supporters of the National Trust um, to help them for um, you know to sell their products that they maybe not have been able to have done before. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. We will see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a good Saturday evening, Thomas.